you see this man? He's a football manager. And look, here's another one and another. It's almost like they're directing their players from the sidelines. A bit like conductors directing an orchestra, right? But are they really in control of what's happening or completely redundant after all? Sometimes you really suffer also as a coach because sometimes there might be moments in the game where you want to give an impact or try to influence something but you don't have any chance because it's so loud, it's so wild, it's so emotional. The conductor on the sidelines. That's the image we all have when we think of a football manager. But that's just one aspect of the job. A manager is responsible for a team of assistant and athletic coaches, scouts, nutrition experts, analysts, media officers, physiotherapists, mental coaches and for the players, obviously. They've essentially become CEOs, who are responsible for setting the agenda and keeping track of its compliance, the main guy. Because you need that guy to be the main guy and telling you like, this is how we play. You're not doing anything else. You're playing like we want to play together. And I think that's the, the hardest part of the job for him, but it's also the most important part of the job to get so many players to work towards the same goal every single week. That's Eric Smith, defender of St. Pauli. And that guy he mentioned is currently Fabian Hürzeler. Ja, moin erstmal. He's only 30 years old and Sampaoli is his first coaching role in professional football. So far, so record-breaking. He's won all of his first 10 games, making him the only coach ever to do so in Germany's second division. Gut aufgepasst, ja, ich weiß. <laughs> but how much of that success was achieved on the sidelines? It's really important to be there, yeah, to be there on the sideline that the, the player, they look out. Even if they don't want, but they look, okay, what, what is the coach doing? So the players are looking for someone. The biggest thing for me is to be authentic beside the pitch. So don't play something because the player recognizes it. Sometimes it's a little bit embarrassing when I see myself, but I can say that it's authentic. I don't try to, to play something. I try to support my team beside the pitch. I try to, to help them. So can Hürzeler, like an orchestra maestro, still play an important role? You have to give the emphasis to what is important and you have to set the goal, but at the same time you have to carry through the entire performance. Meet Christian Macellaru. He's currently chief conductor of the VDR Symphony Orchestra in Cologne. He's also a director of a team Although we all know the difference between pitch and podium. The main difference, I think, in a symphony orchestra versus football game is in a symphony orchestra, your only adversary is your own self. That's true. I can't say I've heard of multiple conductors competing over who is in charge of the orchestra during a concert. But not having an opponent does not mean that a manager's and a director's job are that different. It's my job to actually really find a way that we continue to, to really try our best. That's similar to what Hürzler is doing. But opportunities for a manager to help or only reach his players during a match can be scarce. For one, there's the acoustic problem. What? I can't hear you! Now imagine a full stadium. That's a challenge Hürzeler faces every weekend. Now, think of wingers and fullbacks, for instance. They always have at least one half where they play on the opposite side of the pitch from the manager. So managers need to know when to coach whom. Okay, so what we have talked about, you make a pressure front, you don't let it out of your eyes. We call it the triangle of acceptance. So everything what is near of your bench and where you can say you can have impact on it, I, I try to coach a lot. In this moment, I can say everything or anything to him because it's a discussion between him and me. So nobody listen and nobody can recognize it. And then I can say him tactical things. Hürzela knows that the impact on the players outside said triangle is far less than on the ones close to him. But what if he wants to reach them? Well, there are a lot of ways, like a piece of paper, for instance. Hürzela makes use of on-field middlemen. 
I have, of course, leaders on the pitch, and uh, Paga is a leader, for example, Eric is a leader, Checo is a leader, so we have a lot of eye contact uh, during the game. So when they feel, okay, something is not so good at the moment, they, they look at me, then of course I can make the body language, for example, stay calm or be more aggressive. Having communicators on the pitch is not only crucial for the team, but it also reassures the manager that he's getting through without having to shout his lungs out. I can say that it's really helpful for me. And I hope that Eric also sees it like that we have eye contact. I don't know if he do it like that he just do it to see me or if he really wants to have like a message for me. So it will be really interesting to, to get his answer. <laughs> So, what's up, Eric? Do you know what's going on or are you just gazing? I, I would never look at Fabian just to look at him. When I look at him, I know, I always know what he wants me to do because he could, I don't want to say too much about how we try to approach every game, but, but yeah, we, we definitely have some signs and it's easy for me to understand what he wants me to do. Eye contact, hand signs, body language, sounds like a conductor to me. Contrary to the, to the coach, I do feel like I am both the coach sometimes, but I'm also the the starting, uh, uh, you know, player because I am involved in some ways a little bit more than what the coach is in a game. You know, I mean, I, I know that the coach is very involved in the game, but I am actually on the field. What Marcelaro describes is a player manager. They exist in football. Ruth Rullet at Chelsea, Vincent Compagnie at Anderlecht, Wayne Rooney at Derby County, or Kenny Dorglish at Liverpool. Even Vinnie Jones, law. But at the highest level, these are rare cases. Hürzela was a player manager before at a lower tier club. Does this mean that a conductor has more power than a manager? I think that I have less power than a coach does because um, first of all, once I start the game, once I start the, the symphony, uh, I can't stop. It doesn't matter what happens. And there are no substitutions. And a coach, I think, with the substitution, with a timeout, with things like this, uh, a coach can actually restart the game. He's got a point. A manager can do a lot from the sidelines. An important task is just being there. Look at the great ones. Franz Beckenbauer was famous for his pitch-side smile and his go-out-and-play attitude. Or England manager Sarina Wiegmann pushing the Lionesses forward for 90 minutes straight. How supporting are you beside the pitch? How positive are you? So for example, clapping in the hands you can always do. Even if there is a bad scene, you clap in your hands, the team recognizes this. And values it. Ancelotti calmly chewing gum, Klopp riling up the fans, Simeone, well... How you act, the team is the mirror on the pitch. When you're always emotional, always wild, I think that the team will also get wild. Of course, there's the halftime break, when managers can change tactics and calm nerves. But probably his most invasive tool can be used up to five times per game. Ref, ref, we've got a sub, sub. Of course, you can change the formation with the players you have, but you can also change a player where you can say, OK, this player might change the game now. There's a tactical substitution or you say, OK, a mentally a substitution. So, for example, there's a player on the bench where you know when he comes in, he's manipulating or he's trying to do wild or crazy things with the opponents. All in all, the conductor, be it music or kicking a ball, has to read the situation, has to read his players. Recently sacked Bayern coach Julian Nagelsmann once said, 30% of coaching is tactics, 70% social competence. I try to find the right balance between finding the comfort and the challenge for the, for the musicians. So there's a sweet spot, like a great basketball player will have a sweet spot where they always make the three-pointer. Right, this is, uh, that's what it is. And, and it's the same for the musicians. And it's the same for football players. I think it's a small margins everywhere, but those small, if you have a coach that can win those small margins as much as possible, I think you have a better chance of winning every single football match.
While the players have to work as a team, it's up to the manager to help activate every player's sweet spot, be it with gestures, substitutions, or with words. Something like, show the world that you're better than Messi. Go on. That's what Joachim Löw said to Mario Götze before he scored the winner at the World Cup 2014. You have to understand them, you have to know what a player needs. Of course, you also have to analyze the situation and with which situation is he at the moment. So, is he good in the game? Has he a lot of actions? Has he a lot of self-confidence? Then, yeah, you, you try to leave him alone. Some players need also, hey, come on now, and you shout at him more angry. In other cases, the player needs more like uh, supporting words. I hear who is wrong and why. But it's my decision then, psychologically, to say, you are wrong. Or to say, let's do this together and see if we can be better. And I think it's the same with the coach. I can't imagine a football coach uh, being comfortable, uh, you know, screaming at, uh, <laughs> at one individual player. That might be true for some, but might even help in other moments because... They are all different characters and if you know it, uh, if you know them, then uh, it really helps you to, to coach well beside the pitch. Of course, standing on the sidelines, with the exceptions of making substitutions, the manager's influence is limited. But isn't that a good thing for the players and the manager? That's the first thing that you have to be clear about, that you can't influence it, uh, the game 90, 90 minutes. So there are moments where you have to suffer also as a coach. And we have to just stand there and uh, yeah, look and analyze the game. I think there are small moments where I feel I think some players have that, that they feel like, no, I know how to solve that problem myself. And, and obviously, if it doesn't work, I will hear it the day after. But, but I think the, the big things, like the main targets we have, you have to follow what the coach wants to do, because it's also affecting everyone around you. If, if we just have people running around doing their own thing, it's never going to work. And it's, then it would be no point to have a coach. Maybe managers aren't as involved in the action as conductors. This is the Hürzeler show here. Imagine Diego Simeone or Thomas Tuchel going nuts for 90 minutes straight. They also need time to look at match situations, chat with their assistants or just brainstorm on their own. There are way more factors that play a role in your team's results other than coaching from the sidelines. Plus, just like everything else in life, coaching and conducting requires continuous development. I'm in a process and uh, at the moment, of course, I'm, yeah, I'm active, I'm really active, sometimes maybe too active. Yeah, it will improve by the age or by the experience. So therefore, I, I don't worry, but it's me. Yeah, it's me and that's my character and uh, that, that's why I, I just, I'm just authentic. Yes.